Life has different perspectives and I believe those various shades are captured in spaces that speak a story of its own. I'm Aditi Singh and I will take you on a journey to places that have existed in anonymity waiting to be found. Places which you may have heard of but never discovered. The hidden splendor that will make for a unique experience. Today I will show you the way to escape into the harmony of a quaint hill station, Igatpuri. So come along and walk the stairway to heaven with me to discover this true haven. Welcome to the Great Getaways. morning start from Mumbai began with puffed eyes and a stifled yawn. But in a matter of an hour and a half, I left the hustling city behind and hit the highway that welcomed me with a vast landscape of thick green blanket in various stones on either sides. The scenery got more fascinating with glimpses of local villages. To me, the view looked like it jumped straight out of a storybook. Nestled in the peaceful aura of Sayadri Hills, just about 130 kilometers from Mumbai, the quaint Igatpuri has transported me into a different world in just a matter of three hours. Besides the many shades of green that ran endlessly, my eyes were captivated by the beautiful waterfalls and calming lakes. Ashoka Falls is one such site. Deep in the rocks, the calm waters gush down the gorge to make this enchantingly beautiful waterfall. Taking a walk through the wilderness seemed like the splendor of the forest washed away all my workload. I decided to head next to the Bhandardara Dam. The drive itself to the place was picturesque along green paddy fields with spectacular view of western guards all along the way. of the Sayadris. They say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder, but I found beauty right here at Bhandardara. Right now I'm treating myself to the most enchanting sight I have ever seen in my life. The calmness and serenity of this place can relax anyone and urge them to sit in quiet contemplation and just let go. I was surprised at being unaware of this hidden treasure so close to Mumbai. After an entire day of exploring the Sayadri expanse, I could feel the stress in my calves craving some pampering. So I decided to treat them to a lavish resort. The luxurious Manas Resort is situated on a hilltop. Manas, without a doubt, captures the beauty of Igatpuri at its best.
Varanas has always been a favourite stopover for those passing through the Nasik Highway. The warm hospitality and the stunning location tempt visitors to come back over and over again. The Manus Resort has rooms in different types and sizes. Whether it is a family vacation, get-together, corporate function or a wedding, it will suit your every need. Manas also offers valley apartments for those who wish to own a house in the quaint hill station. Isn't this the dream many of us have? So if you've been dreaming of owning your very own private luxury villa on a hill, here is how you can get it. What's a journey without memories? Accompanied by lush green hills on the way, glimpses of some local villages, a quick refreshing stopover at the waterfall and finally a soothing view of the lake made my journey to Igatpuri longer but definitely eventful and unforgettable. I gave my day not just an early start but a peaceful beginning tucked amid the quiet and calm surroundings of the brightly lit green forest with the constant faint chirping of birds sits a serene meditation center Dhamagiri Where I'm standing right now is a unique landmark not just in Igatpuri but across India Subdued in tranquility of Sayadri resides Dhamagiri, one of the world's biggest meditation centers of growing global organization called Vipassana. Vipassana is India's ancient technique of meditation that is taught in 200 centers across the world. set out on a tour to explore this abode of peace. The grandeur of the entrance and the stunning gold embellished pagodas was an indication to me of the rich heritage embedded inside waiting to be explored. Dhamagiri was opened in October 1976 for its first 10-day course to the general public. Over the years, the centre has grown and developed with not just adults, but also children enrolling in courses. We conduct different courses here, ranging from 10 days to 20 days to 30 days, 45 or even 60 days. After the 10-day course, we offer optional courses that go on for 1 to 3 days. There is no fee to conduct these courses. People who find the course beneficial can donate to the fund. The institute runs on donations only. The courses help the students break away from bondage, stress and anxiety. Therefore, by the end of the course, they achieve clarity and different perspective on life, which reinforces their belief in simplicity. People come here looking for some peace of mind. They come here to get rid of illnesses, vices, anger, etc. I could feel the calm of Dhamagiri absorbing me, making me feel more alive and present in the moment. If just a stroll in Dhamagiri could leave my mind less unsettled, then a 10-day course would definitely be a magical experience. After spending a quiet morning soaking the serene surroundings of Dhamagiri, I could feel my mind wandering in search of something more. 
it was looking for something to get my adrenaline pumping. And I realized that yes, some thrill was yet to be experienced. If you think that Igatpuri was all about being peaceful, no. This hill station can get pretty loud when it comes to action. Well, little did I know that Igatpuri offered a slice of adventure as well. It promises a chance to experience a gushing adrenaline. This holiday was incomplete without some adventure and I got myself at Mahindra's off-roading track to seek some adventure which I'm going to start right now. The track is spread across a landscape that is no less complicated than a jungle which offers the opportunity to off-road enthusiasts to get the maximum thrill out of it. While I was gathering my nerves to get ready for the challenging ride, I was told by my trainer that just knowing how to drive was enough to make for a thrilling off-roading experience. And so I hopped on a bright orange ride, shuffled the gears a bit and fastened my seatbelt before I was all set and raring to go. The trick was to keep the speed steady and be prepared for unexpected hurdles. Though my heart constantly thumbed, but it thumbed even harder when a steep slope came my way. With a deep breath, I changed the gear to the first and relentlessly pressed the accelerator to get to the top. My feet constantly shuttled between accelerator and brake and my steering kept rotating from one side to another, battling those sharp turns. As I was successfully crossing each hurdle, the thrill just doubled and tripled. From a boring city driving experience, I was transported to a space that felt nothing less than a desert safari. Well, I have to say, the feeling of overcoming fear after the roller coaster ride was paramount. During his 14 years of exile, Lord Rama made this place his home. I am at one of the ancient cities of India called Nasik. Rich not just in its mythology, the city's landscape is covered with sprawling, beautiful vineyards. So join me in while I explore the various facets of this city. Next morning, something was different about the air that Nasik breathed. I could sniff a holy scent that sprinkled the atmosphere of the city, reminiscent of a spiritual ecstasy. Kumbh Mela is one of the hallowed festivals of India that is celebrated every 12 years. It is believed that when God and demons were having a fight over the nectar, Lord Vishnu flew away with the nectar and dropped it at four different places of which Nasik happens to be the one. This time after 12 years the Mela is happening in Nasik and I'm glad that I got the opportunity to see it at the time I visited this city. After 12 years in 2015, Nasik has got an opportunity to host millions of guests from every spot of the country and from all walks of life in the world's largest holy festival, Kumbh Mela. This mass Hindu pilgrimage where Hindus gather to bathe in a sacred river is billed as the world's largest congregation of religious pilgrims. Bathing in these rivers is thought to cleanse a person of all sins. 
With this belief, devotees from across India withstand obstacles of all magnitudes to redeem themselves at Kummela. This unwavering faith of the pilgrims was so contagious that the first thing I wanted to do was experience the touch of the cleansing holy water and make a wish. These powers of faith demonstrated at Kum that can part a river, move mountains and endure the hardships come bundled up for being an integral part of Kummela. The motive of this congregation of millions gathered together is to be freed from the vicious earthly cycle of life and death and move towards a heavenly realm which knows no suffering or pain. An eternal life free of sins is the promise that comes attached with the Kumela. It's a promise to which millions want to be bound with and it is this promise that brought me closer to these millions who have inspired me to come again. My experience of Kummela has undoubtedly made for one of the most unique ones. It revealed the true grandeur of our motherland's vibrant lifestyle, tradition and culture. You cannot be in the land of wine and not know what goes behind making it fine. This treasure unique to Nasik has been part of our many celebrations but until today, never have I seen where all this delicious drink travels before it comes to us packaged in sleek looking bottles. Being in Nasik, there was no way I would let this opportunity go and I decided that if I wanted to know it all, I had to go back to the roots. Well, quite literally, I did. Growers is spread over a huge landscape with wine plantation as one of the focal points of its panorama. Well, it's not just the scenery, but Grover's also stands alone in producing wines of supreme quality and taste in India. Sumit Singh Mandla, the CEO of Grover's Vineyard, was going to be my Sherpa in this quest. Well, he promised to tell me all that goes into wine making and also reveal some of the secret combinations that make for one of the best wines produced by Grover's. Mr. Sumeth walked me through the entire vineyard that showcased giant storage tanks and barrel room which kept me in awe of the fine precision that is elementary for fine wine making and clearly Grover's mastered it well. While I could not broadly visualize the process of winemaking, what was still missing was a candid revelation from the master of wine himself of his long-lasting love. I have with me someone right now who knows all the flavors of happiness. Please welcome the CEO of Grover Zampa Vineyard, Mr. Sumit Singh Matla. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you so much. I want to start by asking you how and when did Grover Zampa begin? It all uh, started with the passion of a uh, gentleman called uh, Kaval Grover. Uh, he used to uh, travel very often to, to France, Bordeaux. So he conceptualized the idea of creating a premium quality wine in India. And um, when he started sharing this idea with his friends, a lot of people uh, laughed at it. Also, a lot of wine experts laughed at him because they always say that uh, this is not the best zone to make wine. 
quality wine. So, uh, but he said, yes, I would like to give it a try before I say no. We looked at about uh, 10 states. We, start, we studied these states for uh, possibility of growing wine grapes. Uh, we did all the possible tests. And we got the best results at that time from uh, the wines from Nandi Hills. And that's how the, the grower uh, brand started. Uh, this was 1988. And it was 1992 that we basically rolled out our first vintage. Okay. And uh, 2012, we had a merge between two companies. Okay. Uh, so Valadvin, who was operating this winery in uh, in Igatpuri in Nasik, uh, under the Zampa brand, there was a merge. And then uh, the company known as Grower Zampa Vineyards, okay. of course. Now we make wines in both the both the regions, and probably we're the only producers in India who have facilities and vineyards in both these regions. So is that the most unique quality about Grover Zampa Vineyard? Having two wineries in both the most important regions for, uh, for winemaking in India, it gives us um, uh, more to experiment, more to offer. For example, in our vineyards in, uh, in Nasik, we tried Tempranillo, which is a Spanish grey variety. No, nobody ever thought of uh, doing Tempranillo in India. Okay. But uh, the result was, was fantastic. So, so you were the pioneers of... You can uh, say that. So I think it's a, it's a best learning uh, possibility for us and we, we explore it in both the locations. Okay, and coming to the varieties, how many varieties does uh, um, Zampa have? Overall, if you see the number of varieties is over about 12 varieties that we use. Uh, but we make up close to about uh, nine brands now in our portfolio uh, with uh, 36 wines totally. Wow, that's yes. a lot. So um, during the year, how many visitors do you have in uh, Grover Zampa and at what time of the year? Well, we, the number is constantly growing okay. and uh, this year uh, between the two locations, we'll certainly have about over 25,000 visitors. The period between, um, between November till, till about March, okay. that's the time when uh, the, the most of the harvest process happens and also there's much more activity in terms of wine production. Okay. So what are those activities, some of those activities? So right from the, the, the stomping in the big vats mm -hmm. to tasting sessions to pairing sessions, uh, art because we obviously have art as an integral part of our so label. So the stomping f uh, festival begins in the month of January, right? In January, so I'm yes. definitely coming. Please I look forward to it. Right? After a brief conversation with Mr. Sumer, he agreed to show me some of his premium wine collection. One of the, the white wine, which has okay. really uh, got us to on the international page. Right. This is the Vijay Mitraj Reserve Collection. We launched this wine last year. Okay, so this is a, a wine which is made from uh, Vionier grape. Okay. So while everybody was talking about Chenin Blanc and Sauvignon Blanc for India, mm. we thought of trying a new grape variety. Okay. And that's where we worked on a Vionier grape. Okay. And uh, we aged this wine in, in, Bar in Barrick for about four months. Okay. And I think the results were really, really good. First uh, vintage for us won us a uh, international award. Okay. Uh, wow. We won a silver in um, International Wine Challenge. Okay. So this is a wine obviously which I think uh, has also become one of my favorite white okay, wine right. in the portfolio. All right. Right. Let's go to red wine. Yeah. So the, the red that we are trying is, uh, mm. is, is the darling for the Indian wine industry. Okay. So this is a wine called La Reserve. That means Darling. the reserve. Okay. This was the first reserve wine for the country. It was launched in uh, uh, 1998. That okay. was the first vintage. Okay. And we have just celebrated what uh, 16th vintage for this wine. Wow, uh, this also incidentally is one of the largest uh, uh, exported wine and available wine in uh, French market. Oh, uh, this okay. wine is made with the uh, Cabernet and Syrah, okay. uh, which is uh, matured in hmm. uh, French barrique for about minimum nine months. Oh. To me, this is uh, very close to a, a good quality Bordeaux wine. Hmm. And the style itself was uh, to make a good quality Bordeaux wine. Okay. We obviously had Michel Roland who came in as a partner. This became our signature blend. Okay. And pretty much, I think if today you ask anybody that mm. which is the red wine that you drink from India, mm. it's mostly Cabernet Syrah because that's the style which was really preferred by the wow. by the Indian uh, Indian Indian um, consumers. consumers. Uh, tell me where uh, across the world, where all do you have the brand? Well, I'm uh, quite proud to say that uh, we we are there in about 21 countries now, okay. uh, with uh, France, Japan, and UK as our top three market. Okay. And from France, we also do rest of the Europe, Germany, Italy. Spain. Okay. So uh, that's very much possible. That's that's the beauty of wine. All right. Mr. Sumer, thank you so much. I have to tell you that I have I've had a fascinating experience. And not just that, I'm going to go home being a very informed person and rather make better choices when it comes to wine. No, thank you so much.
I never imagined that wines could have so much research and study behind it until I came here and took a tour around the Grover Zampa vineyard. Well indeed, it was a great learning experience and this time, when I go back to a restaurant, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be a lot more selective about choosing my wine. A slight chill in the air overlooking the silhouette of the Kasara Ghats was the moment I romanticized the quaint landscape. Now, there could not have been a better way to end my day.